highly anticipated trailer for Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune is finally here. Clocking in at 3 minutes, which is twice as long as the first initial teaser trailer that was shown in theaters before Tenet, so there is a lot more to unpack here. In this video, I'd like to talk about my initial impressions with a quick breakdown and analysis of the trailer and the various elements in it and what it reveals about this upcoming film. Spoiler warning, as I'll be talking about a few scenes from the book that we see depicted throughout the trailer. The trailer begins with Paul having a vision. He says, there's something happening to me. There is something awakening in my mind I can't control. He's talking with the Reverend Mother. From the very beginning of the trailer, the focus is on Paul and what is happening to him. We see his visions of Zendaya as Chani and of a crusade. Throughout the trailer, we continue to hear his conversation with Charlotte Rampling's Reverend Mother. Paul is telling her about his dreams, and then we cut to him awakening from his dreamlike vision. We see Paul in his bedroom. The detail of the furnishings is amazing. I think it's a beautiful way to reinforce visually that Paul is from an oceanic planet with what looks to be koi fish engraved in his headboard. He continues his interrogation with the Reverend Mother, and this of course leads into the test with the agony box and the gum jabar. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box, and you die. The gum jabar, instead of a needle attached to a thimble, is just a long needle, though looking very intricate and deadly. One thing I thought was interesting as this scene played in the trailer, and what I hope will be Villeneuve's approach in the film, is how he depicts what is happening inside the box. In David Lynch's version, there was this visual inside the box with Paul's flesh burning, something that seems unnecessary since there is no physical harm being done to his hand. Pain is caused by nerve induction. And in my opinion, Timothy's screaming in agony is a much better way to convey his pain, and so I hope that is how it is fully played out in the movie. She next tells Paul, presumably after he's passed the test, you've proven you can rule yourself. Now you must learn to rule others. Next, we see a couple new shots of Caladan, and we see again the first image that was revealed months ago with Timothy on the beach. After that, we see the famous shield devices being used in Gurney and Paul's sparring session, and how they're depicted in this version. Again, instead of the shield belt, these devices are worn on the wrist and are activated by pressing a button on the back of the hand. I am very pleased with how the shield technology is depicted. The shimmering effect is very much how I envisioned it. Also, there is a flash of red on Paul's shirt in the sparring scene, and it appears that when you're able to work a weapon through someone's shield, it flashes red, something we see later on as well in the trailer. Next, we see a couple more shots of Caladan. One image in particular that I found moving was of Oscar Isaac as Duke Leto kneeling over what appears to be a tombstone. This seems to indicate the gravity of his situation and the pain of having to leave Caladan that has been his family's home for generations. You can see that feeling along with other emotions in Jessica's face as well. Next is the sequence of House Atreides arriving on Arrakis. I really like the depiction of the reunion with Jason Momoa's Duncan Idaho, who has been on the planet establishing good relations with the Fremen people until this point in the story. The shot of Stephen McKinley Henderson here is interesting as there appears to be a black line or dot on his lower lip, and this could be how they intend to depict lip stains caused by drinking Sappho juice, a substance used by Mentats to further enhance their mental capabilities. Later on, we see Dave Bautista's Beast Raban and Stellan Skarsgård's Baron Harkonnen. I have to admit, I was thrown off a bit by their appearance. I was imagining Beast Raban as more fearsome, especially with Dave Bautista's portrayal, but the bald head and no eyebrows and very pale skin is a look that I find myself having to get used to. However, on the Harkonnen homeworld of Getty Prime, there is very little natural light, as it is a heavily industrialized planet, so it does make sense for him to be a little pale. As we see later in the trailer, it looks like the rest of the Harkonnen soldiers have the same look of being bald and pale as well. An interesting stylistic choice. In the image of the Baron, we see him in a very hazy environment and looking quite massive and wheezing and giving orders to kill, as well as another clip of him emerging from a black liquid bath. We don't see much of him at all here, so it's hard for me to have a definitive impression of his design and portrayal as the Baron, 
but considering there's not a whole lot of scenes with him in this half of the story, they might want to keep visuals of him to a minimum. I was, however, surprised by how much we're seeing of Duncan Idaho in this trailer. It's not a complaint by any means, and I'm very impressed by what I've seen. There are a couple of very dramatic fight scenes depicted involving Duncan, one in Fremen garb, and one with his plain white shirt, so there's definitely two different scenes at different parts in the story being weaved together. Next, we see Paul in the desert, and this appears to be where he sees Chani for the first time in real life. His vision is coming to fruition. Next, we are presented with a flurry of images of battle scenes. Gurney leading a company of soldiers. We see an ornithopter in flight with wings moving like dragonflies. I am so happy to see how these ships turned out. And perhaps what impressed me the most in the entire trailer was the iconic scene with the sandworm swallowing the spice harvester and how small Gurney and Paul look. What a monster. It looks just like the art used for the Empire subscriber cover. The massive size and countless rows of baleen style teeth. It looks unbelievable. This trailer did not hold anything back, to the point that I find myself taken aback by what all was included, as it's basically the entire film. Again, we have another flurry of images including Dr. Yue with the same Harkonnen forces, Liet Kynes, the Duke Leto discovering a dying shutout Mapes the moment House Atreides has been betrayed. We also see a glimpse of Paul's fight with the Fremen Jameis. There are also images of Paul and Jessica flying the ornithopter into the fearsome sandstorm. Paul picking up a handful of spice that looks like cinnamon with a bit of a sparkle to it. And then finishing with an absolutely amazing look at the sandworm moving beneath the sand, erupting, we see its rough scale-like skin. It is truly massive. While I wish there was that signature inner furnace inside the sandworm, I have to say it looks awesome. Again, they didn't hold anything back. Throughout the whole start of this marketing campaign, they essentially have only given us crumbs, and now they have opened the floodgates. One character that is missing is David Desmalchian's Peter DeVries, but I'm guessing we might get a look at him in another trailer, perhaps this time focusing on House Harkonnen. That's pure speculation, but I would be interested in getting another trailer like that. Overall, it was an unbelievable trailer. What I really liked was the conversation between Paul and the Reverend Mother that was weaved throughout the trailer. It really demonstrates just how much we learn from this interchange. It sets up the story and the world in such an intriguing and gripping way, while at the same time foreshadowing what is to come. It is made clear by the trailer the trap that House Atreides is walking into. Will fear overtake him? Will he endure the trap? So that just about sums up my initial thoughts on this trailer. Honestly, there is so much to unpack here, and I'll probably be coming out with another, more in-depth review of it. But I am curious to know what you think about the various elements of this trailer. What do you think about the score, the visuals, the overall tone? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're curious to know more about the characters and other unique elements of Dune, or a refresher of sorts, check out my series of lore videos which are aimed at helping others get to know the background of the main characters as well as the setting for this unique universe. I'll be watching this trailer quite a few more times and will keep you informed about any new details I find as well as any news updates regarding the film. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.